now uh, i will not take more, more of a time over to you prasad hey thanks for and apologies guys i mean for uh, cutting short the break or no break but uh, we will ensure that i mean uh, you will be uh, best using this time so uh, my name is prasad varghadi uh, part of uh, pcam ninja volunteer group and uh, i am really proud to say that the show that is set up today is a result of pure product thinking and the agility that the team has demonstrated i mean be it, uh, the event planning itself or the branding or the logo or the uh, india productify tag itself uh, anything that you see it has a grand uh, welcoming into the uh, product right so it's pure pure product thinking and the, the agility that the team has brought in uh, and we so far had an inspired talk on um, uh, why it is important uh, to uh, turn crisis into an opportunity and be champions of constraint based innovation we also had a session on how we can apply that innovation uh, to a b2b scenario or a b2b uh, b2c scenario and learn relevant tools and techniques uh, that are important to apply in each of these spaces and then we had a session from kavita on uh, why it is important to be on problem space before jumping into the solution space and it's important to remove those uh, biases uh, while you are actually solving problems so now we have deeraj prasad uh, who is a principal product manager with broadcam uh, who's going to share his experiences in uh, creating a mindset like a mini ceo right uh, he is uh, a product champion he uh, is also a fitness freak so deeraj would love to hear your thoughts on uh, how you are actually maintaining your fitness levels when gyms and other things are closed to, uh, in this scenario and then um, the the best part of it is uh, he is a co-founder uh, for product camp hyderabad so uh, i have seen uh, product camps in hyderabad the, the volume three volumes have been done and the fourth volume is at a plans uh, so here we have uh, dheeraj prasad talking about 30 different learnings that he had in 30 minutes uh, that will set product mindset over to you dheeraj thanks lord prasi i'll dwell on the fitness thing probably at the end given we are <laughs> running short of time but I would love to connect on that as well. But uh, given we were all virtual today, I thought nothing better to start this session but with a quick intro. Starting all the way from the left, um, born and brought up in Hyderabad, the city of Nawabs. I've spent most of my time in Hyderabad. I am a BTEC MBA graduate from uh, Goa Institute of Management. That's where I've done my MBA in marketing and batch, uh, uh, operations. And a quick little trivia, something really personal to me. I have completed two Himalayan trekking expeditions. What that makes me is an official camp leader. So I'm a certified camp leader. If you're planning to go up to the Himalayas sometime, do reach out. And uh, I did that via YHAI. So that's the organization I went via with. So um, any tips, tricks, or you want me to your, be a camp leader, I'll be happy to do that. Uh, I have 12 plus years of um, industry experience ranging across product management, product development. I've done product sales as well. Uh, and I've worked in esteem organizations like CA Technologies, Model and Wipro, and now Broadcom after the acquisition of CA. Now, on the personal front, I live with my family back in Hyderabad. Uh, family includes my parents, my wife, a one-year-old who turns one tomorrow, and a golden retriever. Uh, that, that's a, that is what I am. That's what my family is all about. And then, I, as Prasi said, I, you know, I love being fit. I love playing cricket, like any enthusiast in the country. And I love traveling. I've traveled five out of seven continents so far. And as Prasi said, I love to give it back to fellow PMs. And that is the endeavor where we drive uh, similar camps in Hyderabad, where we've been running for, we were planning for the fourth volume. So that's where we are. So um, I'm one of the organizers of Product Camp Hyderabad. With that, uh, like all good product managers, you know, I believe that product managers are great storytellers. And that's where I would want to start my session even before going into what I intend to talk. And the strikeouts of 30 on each, on my topic are on purpose because I was given 25 minutes today because there's a good amount of Q&A that I saw foresee coming in. That's why I've decided to cut short my session by five minutes so that we can focus on Q&A. So my topic for today is 25 minutes, 25 learnings of being a mini CEO. And there's a story behind it. So this is a story that dates back to 2018 when I was uh, I was still with CA and my head of products called me one day and said, you know what, Dheeraj, you're not going to be the head of products for a product in the workspace collaboration space. If you had heard of Slack, that's where the space comes in. And then you are on your own. Go and figure out what's the best thing to do. This product 
was in shambles. There was no PM for a good six to eight months on this product. A uh, lot of customer issues, a lot of customers complaining. So that's where I believe I have learned a lot as a PM because I was doing end-to-end -end management on this product. I was the head of products for this product, which uh, you know gave gave a lot of credibility into what I did as a PM. So that's the story behind what I intend to do today. And there is a format I have chosen. The format that I have chosen for today is that I'm going to spend probably 30 to 45 seconds on each slide. And uh, that's this is how the format is going to be. There's going to be a timer on each of my slides. I'm going to talk about that one particular word for exactly that amount of time and move on. And so that you know I can condense the learnings in the best possible way and so that I can give back the most to the audience today. With that, I will spend less time here. <laughs> All right, the first thing, you know, first and foremost, when, you know, when you're working on a new product, when you're starting off as a PM, whether you're changing jobs, the most important thing according to me that you should be doing, and based on my experience, is that seek. It's, you're like that guy staring at a forest, right? There's so many trees, you have so much to look at, but then there is so much to seek as well. So the right thing to do when you're starting off on any new product or any anything new in your endeavor as a PM is to seek as much as you can. And, you know, just be an active listener. Try to understand, try to grab as much. There's going to be plethora of information that is going to come to you, but try to seek as much as you can so that you can build better products for tomorrow. And while you do that, you know, spend time to know what ticks. And this is really important. I have seen PMs who come in and they try to change things day one. You know, try to understand what ticks. And what I, when I say what ticks is that things that are going on well. So just because you came, doesn't mean that you need to change things. You know, you got to do, you got to continue to do what the things that work well. So spend time in knowing things that tick well for a product, be it the team, be it the team composition, be it your customer connects, be it what you've been doing in the past, be it your support teams, whatever in the ecosystem. Spend time to know what ticks. If you do that, you know, you don't have to do this. You don't have to change just because you came. Right. It's really important. You know, uh, it's very easy. It's a human tendency to come in with biases and say that, you know what, in the past I have done these 10 things and I know these 10 things work. So I will go ahead and implement that right away. Now, first thing you do is seek where I started and then you spend time to know what takes and you don't change things that work. You know, if you take care of these things, the next most important thing, according to me, when you are working on a new product, you know, Forget new product, when you're being managing the product end to end, the next most important thing where I'll spend a little bit more time is identifying stakeholders early. When I say these, when I say stakeholders early, what I mean is you gotta figure out who are your gatekeepers, who are your decision makers in your entire chain of uh, stakeholders. Uh, you know, your GM is going to fund money, your, um, your head of marketing is going to give you space at your annual conferences for your company. So these are all important stakeholders. And I can quote an example here. When I took over this product, I said this was in bad shape, right? So we didn't have any UX folks here. And uh, from the last session, I know that would be a horrifying experience, uh, but then we, we didn't have any UX assigned to this product. And what that meant is we could not build new capabilities because we couldn't do research. We couldn't do anything on the product. And I didn't want to be the UX plus the PM guy because I wouldn't be doing justice. So in that case, you know, I had I had to go to my GM, convince him to give me those extra dollars so that we can hire additional US resource for the product. So what that means is, you know, focusing on identifying these stakeholders early so that you can continue to do what's right for your customers. Next up, you know, this is again important. Uh, you know, got, you got to get involved everywhere. There's a common tendency that, you know, as a PM, you're either very strategic or you either you're very execution oriented or you're somewhere in between. But when you are managing a product end to end, it's really important to get involved everywhere. When I say everywhere, my definition of everywhere is this support team, their sales, there's pre-sales. There are so many different stakeholders in, this, in your chain that you've got to get involved. There's, there's so much depth of information that your support folks are going to have for you. Get onto those support calls. Try to see what your customers are liking, what they're not liking rather. You know, if you get involved everywhere, of course, you're going to have so much that is come, that is going to come to your table. That's where PMs are good, right? You are good at prioritization. So you prioritize what you want to focus on, but doesn't mean you don't get involved everywhere. Try to get involved everywhere so that you can do the best for the product that you're working on. Next one is again important because when you get involved everywhere, you're going to get insights from everywhere. There are going to be people who are going to come and tell you what you should be doing right away. You are new, so your new guy on the blog always receives all the advice, right? So everyone is going to tell you, but listen to everyone. Put, put, put a lending year because they're putting in the efforts to tell you what's not working, for example. But then data would never lie. 
you know if you're if you're not lucky when you're working on a product that doesn't have data analytics hooked in uh, my advice would be to first work towards that try to see if you can hook up analytics into your product so that you can know exact usage of what's happening and then make your decisions based on data but doesn't mean you would not listen to everyone who's involved because you're connecting with them you're listening to those folks but then essentially you're making your decisions backed by data next few slides are focused around team and uh, i don't think you would see many product managers talking so much about teams but because you know this was a product that was being moved over from us to india there was a lot of team elements also that i had to take up uh, in my journey of managing this product so first things first you know the team knew the background of this product the team knew that there was not heavy investment the team knew that the product was bleeding there was not a lot of uh, uh, enhancement being happening uh, product being moved over doesn't mean that we're only going to do maintenance all sorts of questions well your job as a pm is also to motivate your team although no jd might talk about it when you go to linkedin search for uh, jd on uh, product management no one might tell you that you would have to motivate your team but understand that it's really critical and while you do that be the guiding light you know you because the team everyone around you is going to look up to you to being that guiding light so that you know you are the guy who understands everything who meets the customers who meets support who meets sales so you are that interface between the team and everyone else so that's why i said a couple of slides focused around team and you know apart from motivating the team you got to be the guiding light uh, you know in helping them understand the vision you know if we are doing certain things if you're building some capabilities essentially talking about the whys rather than going in and saying that you know what team we got to build this because i said so that doesn't work uh, and in reality if you be the guiding light and you explain the whys behind what we're doing it essentially works a lot well, better and of course while you do that you know be as open and as transparent as you can like i said in this product we didn't have any ux resources but when i went my met with my gm he told me only one thing look dears i'm going to give you that additional investment but one year down the line if we don't see an upstick in the sales numbers we got to do something about it what that means is we might have to cut capacity well what you know this is an important thing you know, i got to be open and transparent with my team when i'm working with them so it's really important that they understand how critical we are what we're doing and you know that transparency helps in building trust you know when this information comes back to the team in a condensed manner of course it helps in building trust and it helps in building features that we would want to build in future this one i have a very nice little example uh, you know when i talk about celebrating small little successes with your teams uh, because this was a handover situation when we were taking this product over uh, you know we took 21 days to fix the very first bug that came our way and this was in a component that you know no one ever touched uh, it was um, it was an issue that was a critical issue because it was related to securability securability and customers were complaining but then after 21 days we decided to celebrate not because we built a great feature or anything but then it was a milestone for us you know that was the first valuable thing that we shoved, we pushed out of the door so it was a great thing so we celebrated it and it, it's really important these small little things uh, eventually you would realize that how they end, end up in building a better team and essentially you know, winning trust for the teams some section now certain sections focused on customers uh, you know given this was in the workspace collaboration space we had we had platforms like open for customers like facebook twitter we had uh, customers uh, on our app store play store everywhere and everywhere we went because of the state the product was in there was a lot of complaints everywhere now that didn't mean that we don't engage because these customers are spending time and effort to tell you what's not ticking it's like your nps nps is one of the sources but all other platforms where you are active on for example not every b2b product might be in the luxury of seeing uh, of seeing what i'm telling here but then so when you have that luxury leverage it and don't shy away from complaining users the reason i say that is because i i just put that point across that you know these users are not yet leaving you understand that they're just complaining what that means is they're vested in you they like your product but there are certain things that they cannot do because your product is not allowing them to do so it's really important to connect with your complaining users although you might not like it you know if you lend a year and you would not believe i did one of the discoveries of one of a critical features on this product via twitter chat so there was a there, there was a customer who kept complaining on twitter he used to blast us with tweets uh, and i used to respond with the, the with the product handle and eventually i invited him for a dm and i had a long lengthy conversation with him right there because he was more con he was more comfortable in chatting 
So I did a discovery right then and there. So don't shy away from you complaining users. Number one, because they're spending time and effort to let you what let you know what's not working. It's expensive to know what's not working. Number two, you know, they are taking time out, right? So they're going to give you valuable insights. So spend that time with them. This one is my biggest learning on this product. And when I say Pareto applies, what I mean is that they're always going to be 20% of those customers who are going to make the loudest noises. Does that mean that are those only the customers who are not happy with your product? Absolutely not. As a PM, it is your job to go and figure out reaching out to the other 80% of the customers and of course bring in other elements when you're doing this analysis. For example, what portion of revenue are those 20% of customers who are constantly talking about you on your social channels are contributing to? Are these like 50, 50 licensing shops? These are like very small. What happens if you just focus on them with limited capacity? You know, would you be building for everything that your customers want to? So look at both these buckets of customers who are very vocal. Uh, and customers who are ac actually not doing anything, but at the time of renewals, when they come back, they're going to give you a huge list of asks and you would not have capacity to take care of. So proactively reaching out to those 80% of customers who are not always complaining is also an art that I think SPMs we need to develop. Next one, I'm sure everyone agrees, but then uh, this one applies to both external as well as internal. When I say show progress, however small, you know it is for both your customers, when you do your roadmaps, when you're meeting them constantly, when you're doing road shows, et cetera, you're not only talking about what's coming in future, you're also talking about one small little uh, enhancement that you're working on, maybe involve them in a beta. Tell them that, you know what, we are do doing this search related enhancement, would you like to come over for a beta customer? So what this does is it gives them confidence that, okay, the next major release from you might come out at a much later point in time, but then you're actively working on the product. You're showing progress and you're not only showing progress to your customers, what this does to your teams is when you bring in beta customers constantly, what it does is for your teams that are working on your product, it also gives them confidence that their customers are actually validating what you're working on. Okay, I don't know how many of you agree here, but then um, that has worked for me. You know, look at what your competition is doing. And if you feel a need to copy, copy, it's fine, yeah, you know? Uh, no, every every feature, everything in a product is not built just out of innovation, right? You're not the only one who's going. If you're in a workspace collaboration, there, there are certain commonalities that you and your competition are going to have. Of course, they're going to be there. Like they, you're going to have you're going to have one-on-one -on -one chats, you're going to have groups, you're going to have search, you're going to ten different things that are common. And if you think one one of the capabilities that your competition is good at, go ahead and do that research and copy if needed, there's no harm in doing it because you're bettering your product when you're doing it. But of course, when you do that, always remember, points of differentiation are really important for your product. So you cannot build competing product just by doing similarities. You need to have PODs, but they're more for selling. They're more for your marketing collaterals. Uh, and PODs are actually important, but of course, help you in getting to your customers. When you're in those conversations that, hey, you know, why, why should I not use Slack, but use your product? That's where PODs are really, really critical. But then I always go back and say, you know, spend enough time in understanding where your competition is headed, where your market is headed and copy if needed. No harm in doing that. This one, again, a big learning. You know, it's okay to fail. Always remember, PMs, um, you, might, you might build certain things in the product that might not work. Like I said, the 80-20 rule was my biggest learning. Uh, I spent my time focusing on those 20% of winning, winning customers, build in certain capabilities that my, my big 10,000 plus users couldn't adopt. And what that meant is it was a failure. And that was because over enthusiasm, starting something new on a product, being new on a product, wanting to do something on the product, X, Y, Z. But what that meant is it was a big learning, you know, and that is my biggest learning. So take it, go back and pivot as needed. No harm, no harm in failing, but as long as you're learning and pivoting. Well, this question keeps up, keeps coming more often than not. You know, as a PM, how do you know that, you know, what you're building is right? You know, every time I go into the prioritization meetings, I go into the meetings with my teams, you know, why, why do you think we should be prioritizing this particular feature? Well, behave that you know. You're the only guy who can know, right? Because you are manager, you are being the mini CEO, you are the guy who are responsible. So you do know it. Of course, it is all backed by data. Not everything can be backed by data. There's some amount of intuition, there's some amount of research that you're doing with your competition, etc. But always remember that only you can know if it's right. 
And if it is in hindsight, like I said, you, if you fail, you fail, you learn, you move back and pivot. But then always look for those data elements so that you can um, know what's right to build in the product. I know my talk topic is, uh, you know, being the mini CEO, but uh, you know, this is what I would like to say. Before you dream of being the CEO on the product, always remember, be the janitor first. When I say janitor, you know, when I took over this product, I had to do so much cleaning. I had to be everywhere. That's why I go back to that slide when I said, be involved everywhere. So you've got to be the janitor and no JD in the world is going to tell you, hey, PA, we are looking for a PM who is going to be a janitor and clean the job up. No, no one is going to say that. But then always remember, you know, successes belongs to the team. Failures are the ones where we, most of the times we are held accountable because you're owning the product. So be the janitor first, do the cleanup, and then try to be the CEO. Before you being, become the CEO, try to be the janitor where you're connecting the dots, you're doing all the plumbing work, you're getting all the teams together. There, is, there are support teams who are unhappy with the way your product teams are working. Try to fix those bridges. There are documentation teams that are having some frictions. There's your UX team. Try to be the janitor who tries to pl plumber. Maybe plumber is a better word, but you know that's what I would say. You know, Do that first before you dream of being the, the CEO on the product. And before I conclude, uh, you know, I was on this product for six months. So this is this is another big learning, right? I spent in so much time. I had so much learning, but it, when it was time, you know, it's important to move on. It's important to let go. So don't marry the product uh, is, is one thing that I want to feed the audience with today that, you know, as a PM, you're not marrying the product. You are solving problems to you for your customers. That's what I think in the last session also Kavita said. Let's solve the problems. You know, focus on the problems, not so much on the solution, not so much on the product. Don't marry yourself because when it is time to move on, just let it go. Uh, you know, and um, uh, And it's really important that you share what you learn, like I'm doing today. So keep documenting what you're learning. Try to share as much. Come in conferences like these. Try to talk about your learnings. No better way uh, as a PM to learn from each other. So please do that. And uh, before I conclude, I would like to thank all of you. Thank uh, NASCOM. And of course, the credits on my slide goes to unsplash.com. Uh, uh, and in a nutshell, that's what I covered. You know, as a, as a, as being a mini CEO. Uh, and as being a janitor or a plumber, those are the different things that you are as a PM are going to encounter and probably no JD is going to tell you that these are all the things that you've got to do to be a successful PM. With that, uh, I would like to take a pause and Prasi, I'm happy to take any questions or comments or whatever people think about what I just said. Hey, dear, uh, this is a power packed uh, uh, presentation. Whoa, I mean, I already feel like a mini CEO. Um, the, I mean, while the questions are coming up, I think uh, there's a lot of uh, kudos to uh, the presentation format and the presentation. So people are asking, how did you insert the timer on your first slide? So maybe you should have a separate <laughs> webinar where uh, you could do some of the PPT or presentation skills. Uh, uh, I, think, I think, you know what, Prasi, there needs to be one more slide on my deck saying that Google up. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it, 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 this comes up, I think, probably as a second video. It's very straightforward. Just add a circle and uh, exit with the timer that's it it's an animation nothing much all right so one other important aspect maybe i mean you might have this on your 26th or 27th uh, slide which probably removed uh, in the interest of the time uh, abilash is saying that uh, one other important uh, at, uh, trait of a product manager is the ability to say no uh, i yep. think we all agree to that so uh, quick questions from audience uh, let me uh, pick up one from um, let's say Anupam. Uh, so shouldn't the mini CEO also uh, review ROI for the in investments made on the product? What is the role of the CEO with respect to ROI? 
Of course, and that's where, you know, when I talked about the initial segment where I talked about data, I didn't delve into elements of what data you're looking at, but then when you're managing uh, products, you know, when you're managing a product end to end, you're not just looking at features as such, you're looking at, okay, if, if what is my current um, uh, daily active users, monthly active users, how much revenue are they getting? How much churn rate am I seeing? All these metrics are the metrics that on a day-to-day -day basis as a PM, you, you know, um, whether you're managing it end-to-end -end or not is a second question, but you should certainly be looking at. That's why I said, if your products have insights, uh, analytics built in, great. If not, I think everyone should spend time on ensuring that we get those insights out. Uh, I understand it's very difficult for core B2B products, which are not SaaS products, which are still on-prem, but there's still some amount of telemetry that you can still build in those products. But of course, uh, you know, financials are really critical when you're managing a product and when it is the bread and butter of a pm can't agree more right so you did talk about competition and uh, uh, the ability i mean basically if you feel that i mean it's important to uh, replicate that into the product uh, do it uh, but i just wanted to also pick your brains on um, what are some of the ethical and non-ethical ways of doing competitive intelligence and i think there's a question from one of the audience uh, probably to Kavita uh, on the UX research, but uh, I would probably shoot this question to you uh, on how much to depend on the public domain uh, for research and also competitive intelligence, and what are some of the not ethical ways of uh, doing competitive intelligence? Yeah, when we speak about competitive intelligence, like Rasi, we have different sources. Like we ourselves, when we do it today, uh, one aspect is if you have products that give you free sign up capabilities in your computing space, go and sign up, look at what they're doing. When I say copy, I don't mean you bring in exact nature of what you're doing. And as you said, that that might file, uh, fall in Kavita's bucket of how would you do it from an experience standpoint. But then, you know, there are different aspects of get, garnering competitive intelligence. There are a lot of agencies that work out there who are authorized to you know present come and present to you like we have agencies that we work with who come and talk to us about where our competition is heading where you know what are the things that they're building in an upcoming release when they're doing roadmaps etc and this is all competitive intelligence everyone does that and of course it is done ethically um and when i say copy i don't mean you know when i say slack i don't create a replica of slack of course when i copy i need to know that how well it fits into my vision of the product how well it fits in into what my company wants out of the product like for example slack's vision Vision might be to expand to 10 different geographies they want to expand to japan etc but for us uh, you know for the product that we manage uh, we had a different um, need altogether it's all boils down to how it fits in into your broader scheme things when you talk about your vision your strategy where do you want to head etc so that's where those are the elements that come in uh, and of course um, there are as i said there are agencies that work um, with product teams across to give you that insights when you need Oh, thank you. So there's one more question, which is very uh, relevant uh, to the current situation that we are in, uh, given that, I mean, there is an impact because of Corona and uh, how the businesses are uh, getting impacted. Uh, what are some of the uh, businesses doing today uh, in order to uh, solve for that? Basically, what are the alternative business models and revenues? And how does a product manager really play a role in uh, coming up with some of those innovations that the organization need in order to support uh, their client base, their merchant, their uh, user base, as well as uh, their business models. So basically, in a nutshell, I mean, uh, uh, what is the role of a product manager to uh, look for alternative business models and resources, revenue resources? Yeah, and you know, these are challenging times, right, Prasi? No one thought that we would be here, except for maybe Bill Gates, who predicted it in maybe 2015, if I recollect well, in a TED talk. <laughs> but you know, these are unprecedented times, and unprecedented times call for unprecedented measures. As a PM, I think you know, our, our uh, role is very well carved out. You know, at this point in time, the customers would be in a, in a kind of a frenzy. You know, what's going to happen? Our business is going to survive. What are we going to do? You know, are you cutting capacity? What's happening with, and you, you know, uh, these are all the questions. And as a PM, it's our job to get onto those calls with customers even more now. If we haven't done in the past, it's really important we do it now. We try to connect with our customers, although it is all digital and virtual, uh, do that and give be, be that, you know, guiding force tell them that you know we are listening not and be give them the truth uh, and in reality you know in the organization that i work for 
uh, at least I know that nothing drastic is happening. And that's what I need to communicate to my customers. I need to tell them that, you know, we are continuously working in ensuring that we provide the best possible support. Uh, we are trying the best possible digital techniques to ensure we stay up and current. And, you know, that helps a lot in most of the times. Um, and, you know, that is really critical as a PM, connect with your customers even more at these times. Uh, and that's what I would say, that would be my message. All right, on that note, uh, Dheeraj, I mean, you talked about 80-20 parity, uh, which is basically around the silent majority and the vocal uh, uh, my, mm -hmm. vocal minority. Uh, so a quick question around, how do you engage this silent minority, I mean, silent majority, because it's important that we know the pulse of the silent majority, uh, so that you know, I mean, whether you have a toxic revenue situation or your, re your users are really engaged and uh, you don't really have to worry about this uh, silent majority. So what are your thoughts around that? Yeah, and, and Prasi, you know what? These silent majority is not actually so, so silent. What typically happens is the 20% who are really vocal are so vocal that, you know, as a PM, you have limited time on hand. And you it's really uh, what happens is those 20% majority are making so much noise everywhere that that clouds your vision. You're basically not seeing beyond that. And those 80% customers are still making noise. You just got to figure out where that noise is coming from. It can be your NPS. You know, when you're running an NPS, um, you know, they're spend time with your customers, spend time with your detractors, especially. You know, they are telling you things in those forms that probably as a PM, we're not spending enough time to reaching out to our detractors. Start there. That is already existing uh, gold mine of information that is present with you. Uh, get onto those support calls. Try to connect with your support folks. There's plethora of uh, these 80% customers were not very vocal because it probably for now for them at this point in time it's not so much of an issue for them they're continuing um, but you know they are still making those noises it's just that those 20 percent of customers are making slightly more noise and clouding your vision so it's taking those additional efforts going the nps route going the reaching out to customers you never reached out uh, via the account teams figuring out okay what are the renewals that are coming in an upcoming quarter can i preempt those can i get onto those calls reaching out to your account teams looking at churn via looking at your data etc all these techniques that you can do to reach out to those 80 percent customers all right uh Dears, thank you so much for your time today and then and basically in the interest of the time we would like to move on to the next topic but all those who actually posted their questions uh, please hang in there uh, at the end of these sessions you'll get to hear the next steps and uh, uh from the PCAMP Ninja group, I mean, we would like to uh, take some of these questions and post it, uh, or you could actually yourself uh, post these questions and tag the speakers in the social media so that uh, they could get back uh, to you with uh, the answers. Thank you so much for your time, Deeraj, and uh, yeah, it's really an interesting and uh, inspiring session. It's a pleasure, Prasi. Thank you very much. Over to you, Vibor. Thank you, Prasi. Thank you, Deeraj, uh, uh, for, for the wonderful track session. and. Uh, with this, we move to the next session. And before we move there, like Prasi mentioned, uh, you can post your opinion, suggestion, and questions which are which got unanswered to uh, Twitter, LinkedIn. You can tag the speakers; they will come back and maybe uh, th and they will answer uh, answer your questions on on the social media platforms. So now moving on to the next question. Uh, sorry. Next